that is astonishing. No, I don't think it's responsible for any human beings. Uh, this is the <laughs> this is the ground hornbill, responsible only for itself. And if it had a flock, which it doesn't, surprisingly, it would be responsible for the youngsters within that flock. I don't know where the rest of its flock is, however, because to find them on their own like this as adults is very unusual. Now I wonder if the rest of the flock hasn't been wiped out in some way. Should we just go a little bit forward around this bushel? There she is. I think it's a she. She's got that blue gap. And what she's doing now is looking for insects, probably beetles and beetle larvae that are buried underneath the elephant dung that she's opening up. I wouldn't like to be a beetle larvae attacked by a beak like that. I wouldn't like to be a beetle larvae full stop, but especially not one that's attacked by a ground hornbill. And the dexterity with which that beak is able to pick up tiny little things out of the dung amazes me. The fact that it's able to discern so quickly and then pick up the beetles and beetle larvae I just think is remarkable. It is not an easy tool to have, I don't think, attached to the front of your face. I just want to check that I haven't told you a lie because we shouldn't lie, I don't feel. Should we, Fergus? What did you say this morning? Ah. Yes, it is a female. Now, there's a question from Woman Woman. Hello, Woman Woman. You want to know if this bird can fly? It can fly. It flies very well. There is only one bird in Africa, as far as I'm aware, well, no, there are a few. There are only, there's only one bird other than penguins that cannot fly, and that is the ostrich that you saw with Scott earlier. Uh, in fact, all ostriches are unable to fly. Otherwise, you will find that African birds almost universally. I don't think there's any other flightless bird other than penguins, which of course swim, that cannot fly other than the ostrich. And the reason for that is of course that if you cannot fly and you're not very good at running, which most birds are, except for the ostrich, you're likely to get eaten by something. And you find that where birds have lost the ability to fly over the course of evolutionary time, it is in place normally on islands to which their ancestors have flown, but to which the ancestors of mammal predators have not been able to get. So, for example, New Zealand has a lot of flightless birds, and that is because it is an island, of course, and there were no mammals living there, or very few mammals, I think one or two rodents perhaps, were there any? I don't know. Anyway, very few and none of them predators uh, living on New Zealand when human beings arrived there. That's why they've got so many flightless birds. Mauritius and the dodo, classic example. Now, Omka, you're wondering how we can tell the difference between male and female. This is a female. If you look beneath her beak, and there you've got a little blue, navy blue patch above the red. That occurs on the female. That does not occur on the male. That patch on the male is pure red. So this is a lonely spinster. And I say lonely because they are social birds. They will not choose to live on their own like this. And she's an old bird. Well, she's an older bird. She's at least nine. They only look like that when they're about nine years old. And so she has lost her flock. All righty, we're gonna move on from this bunch, see if we can quickly get to the sausage pride before the end of the drive. In the meantime, I believe that Steph has got something very small that is sitting on a branch. What could it be?